There you go. Social distance. Can you see me? I can see you. This way or this way? <laughs> Hello and thank you uh, for coming back to join us on this Friday, June 19th. Um, Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth. We would like to thank you again for um, tuning in every Friday. Today we will be talking about Article 29 from the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children. Article 29 states, your education should help you develop your talents, respect your identity, your language, and your values. Uh, so we're going to have some conversations about that today, but as uh, we do every Friday, we're going to let Cheryl kick us off. Bonjour, Kanu Abiktishnikaz Nameyon Mawagan. I say miigwech. I've offered our tobacco today. So my role here as uh, the Knowledge Keeper at Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth, um, I'd like to say that uh, the Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth wish to acknowledge that we are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the beautiful homeland of the Métis Nation. So I have a few things to talk about today in terms of quality of education, land-based, love it. So uh, yeah, we'll get started and uh, give it back to John. And I won't cut you off if you want to. I'm just <laughs> going to uh, say hello and John, welcome back. Um, I just want to, we're going to cover it a little bit later, but I just want to throw it out there. There's an online survey uh, that we want all youth, 14 uh, to 20 to fill out chance to win an iPad mini. Super and cool prize. So uh, we've had good response so far on this survey and we're just really looking to have this voice. We'll talk a bit about it later. Uh, anybody that has any questions, feel free to leave those questions in the comments. We will get back to them uh, by entering, or sorry, by putting a comment, putting your name. We can definitely put you in for some of our Macy's Spray. We have the, uh, the t-shirts. We have I got my pen this week. Kathy didn't wasn't able to oh, steal it. Oh, I had mine all week until just I put it on my So desk. interestingly enough, when John's talking about the pen, I gave a pen away oh. yesterday. So I am gonna have to try and uh, sneak John's out of his <laughs> desk or out of his hand at some point during the episode so that I can replace the one I have given away. <laughs> I will be on the lookout. <laughs> so with that, um, we will just pass it off to you, Cheryl. Okay. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about. Um, Again, the tobacco being important and understanding. Uh, I wanted to give you an update on my tobacco plants. I've been mm -hmm. growing tobacco medicine. The four medicines are very important to Aboriginal people. They start out with tobacco, cedar, wheatgrass, and what's the last one? Sage. Right. Just checking to see if you guys <laughs> knew. Wanted to make sure you're up on your four tobacco medicines. Always keep it on our toes. There's kinds of sage I learned. The last, That's last right. We There's right. Good. Uh, there was actually a uh, sage that only females are allowed to smoke it. That's right. During their time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the medicines, I have been growing tobacco plants. They are now this big. I haven't hmm. been able to. That rain and heat. Wow. It really, um, I couldn't believe it. It's it's a plant, they're very hardy plants, you know, when they say medicine, and we went on our medicine walk, I just wanted to remind you that um, some of those medicines that we picked are drying out now, and we're getting ready to use them. So next week will be, um, I'm in the, the lookout for any kind of clean jars with lids uh, to make medicines to store. That's how I like to store them in glass jars. 346. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't have a mass influx of jars showing up. Everybody will be, what's going on? So um, the medicines are going good. Um, I noticed that uh, people are really being respectful around the medicines this year, and that's so good to see that uh, they're looking and they're waiting for the right time. Um, our, our growing season, uh, along with COVID, we're not blaming it on COVID, but Mother Earth has told us when and when and how to be respectful and pick that medicine. So again, our growing year is a little bit off. We had such a cold spring, an unpredictable spring, and now we've got heat. We had intense heat, like unbelievable, knocked everybody out. And now it's kind of flicked the switch and it's back to cool temperatures again. So uh, I don't know how that treats our medicines, but our animals uh, have had their babies. So that part of the springtime is gone. A lot of medicines are getting ready to be harvested. So uh, you'll see people out in their, like their skirts, 
offering tobacco picking. I, I'm I'm very excited to take out the staff. We haven't planned our staff mm -hmm. uh, medicine picking day, but that's coming along soon. So we'll be looking for sweet grass, uh, doing some teachings around that. Uh, but uh, later on in the show, I will talk a little bit about the eagle feather. I think that's interesting. I know, just from myself being on lucky staff, I think for the last two weeks I've had you just getting to uh, experience and learn from that stuff for myself and further my own knowledge. I really appreciate that. getting that opportunity. So it'd be nice to have all the staff get that opportunity as well. Um, so it's on our Facebook page too. The kids uh, took over our Instagram. It was quite fantastic. So we're going to shout out and say thank you to Sophia. Um, we talked about it a little last week, uh, Cheryl and I both said, we didn't realize that they were taking it over, but those memories <laughs> are, are still yeah. continuing to serve me even weeks later, so. I honestly don't think that if I knew that I wouldn't be us, not goofy. I love being goofy with the kids. They bring that, that energy, that youthful energy out in me, so. If anybody wants to reach engagement live, session the kids took over my interview. I think you leave comments because uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty funny. And maybe the them combined with uh, Cheryl, we'll see what kind of goofy this can actually happen. <laughs> yeah. So interestingly enough, I, I think that that medicine picking, and, and I guess it wasn't picking, it was more of a walk and, yeah. and just a very, very... Uh, um, we could talk about that in terms of how the, the semantics of language is so important. Uh, education for Aboriginal people can happen anywhere inside, outside, it's all based on opportunity and being able to share that knowledge that you have. So land-based education happens year round, day, night, 365 days in a year. Our, our education system was very um, diverse in terms of telling people how things are because it was tested and shown through our environment, through the, the natural uh, cycles of life, spring turns into summer, summer turns into fall, fall turns into winter, and it goes around the sun. So, you know, the same thing for our full moon teachings. Everything has a, has a life and a cycle, and that's what we learn about, even in terms of uh, growing patterns. Growing patterns happen in seven-year patterns. Uh, I've been learning lots. I have a, a grand puppy that's having babies now, and I knew nothing about puppies. So now I know a little bit about the growing cycle, but we learn different things about um, going around. During COVID, I had uh, the, the awesome gift of spending time with my grandchildren. We'd go for little walks, and we'd look at the leaves and popping up in the trees. And to walk down our street now, it's all canopy. So the leaves have really changed the, the look of the environment. We grew we grew seeds, we planted our, our plants. Uh, kids love the dandelions and the fluff. Mm. Grandma didn't, but <laughs> that that was some of the things. But going outside to learn about land base, what does that look like? So our schools are now uh, using that as part of their curriculum. Yeah. They're learning about uh, science. They're learning a little bit of math. You know, it, everything can be included in that. So. I'm really glad to hear that our languages are being promoted again. That is wonderful. So and that kind of leads us into a bit of our right for the week. So we'll get we'll get into uh, first of all just the 42 rights. Anybody that's been at this before um, or who hasn't, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child has these 42 articles of rights um, that are not optional. They are equally important, and again, they will not take into the basic rights for youth and children and again as adults and as caregivers they're not optional these rights are there they're legal and they are set for all youth so that's why we talk about them every week and we might pick out one or two and just emphasize them but if you want if you can go on to our website we do have the macy uncrc poster and uh i just recommend that you would print it i would print it off show it to your kids if you're an educational provider Again, just speak to your youth about this because that's one of the rights we've talked about before is the right to know your rights. So, uh, yeah, the Macy's thing is very, very important. And I will pass it off to Kathy to speak to this piece of rights. All right, so we have a video to show you, but I'm just going to talk a little about your education, helping you develop your talents, respecting your identity, language, and values. Um, as Cheryl mentioned, 
uh, part of our, our journey um, through the park and through just the beauty of nature really was um, having Cheryl to, you know, share her knowledge. Uh, but that reciprocal, the, but the reciprocal value in that was really that the kids opened up and shared. Um, it was our first uh, post um, online visit. So that part again was fantastic. But just the idea that what we've been missing uh, during these, these times and, and the lack of kind of physical space with our kids really was for me, um, I miss learning from them. It, it's been very difficult to to be online in Zoom. Um, we've done it, we've managed to, but I just really feel like um, when we're all together, there's just such a show of solidarity and ideas and thoughts, and it's just so respectful. Um, so when we look at education, part of the conversations I was able to have um, with our team and with the young people was, what is education and while the, the Western model of education, all kids need to go to school, absolutely, everybody needs to really work hard at it. Um, but we really, really need also to focus on um, the piece of education for, for our kids that we found was missing was the peer education. So what is education? How do you respect your identity, language, and your values? You do that in a collaborative way. So that land base was really huge for, for our young people. Um, so I would say when we're looking at a quality of education, um, we're not always looking at just uh, the, the education system. We are looking at how we are educating our young people, how our young people are educating us, and you know how it's important to listen. So John's going to talk a little bit about the listening tour, but really that education piece is you are teaching us, so we really, really need to, to hear your voice. Um, Article 12 states, you have the right to express your opinion. So please take this opportunity to do so. Um, I'm going to let uh, let John play the video um, because it's really, and I'm going to give a shout out to one of our youth ambassadors, Rose. Uh, so she created a video on Article 28. You have the right to the same quality of education as everyone else. So here are uh, youth thoughts and perspectives on, on that particular article. <laughs> have the right to the same quality education that every other Canadian child has, regardless of your school. I believe that all children deserve access to quality childcare and education. Learning begins as soon as a child is born. Birth to five years of age is the most crucial part of a child's development, also known as the early years. Their brains are constantly growing and taking in new information. This is when learning begins and we get them ready to meet the world. Children learn most through their play. That's why it's important that all children have access to quality childcare center with the playground, books, toys, and great teachers. Education in the early years is important because it is the beginning of all education. Children are our future. So I'd like to, to thank Rose for, for putting that together, for speaking those really important words. Um, again, I can't stress enough how, um, how important it is that we are supporting our young people to create videos, to create their written work so that they can teach us. Um, because again, they have, uh, the young people that, that we work with and that we are in community with, um, they're important and I mean Cheryl hopefully one day we will do a, a teaching on just um, how important it is in, in the Indigenous um, culture our traditions our values um, children are gifts and we have to continue to see them as gifts um, right through to adulthood when they become adults they will have their own gifts so it is our role really to to teach them how important they are to mm -hmm to us, to their community. Um, so we talk about quality of education. Um, I just want to again, shout out to Rose, but she uh, worked very, very closely with the uh, early, as a early, early childhood educator. Um, and the, just the content of the information and the stories that she shared with me really taught me a lot about early childhood education. Um, I've spent the last 15 years working with uh, youth between the ages of you know 12 and 18. So, mm -hmm. um, having my focus redirected by one of our youth to say, hey, <laughs> it's important, but we got to start there. Um, so again, young people mobilizing change and changing, um, changing 
the systems for the young people that are coming after them. And when I say young people, all children and youth. Um, one of the other things I just wanted to point out was when we had a, a long discussion on um, education and cultural sensitivity and all of these, uh, you know, post um, uh, truth and reconciliation, what is the language we're using? So we were using the language of cultural sensitivity. Um, and I was called out by the kids uh, who really firmly believe that cultural inclusion is a better way to describe what it is they need in their scope of education. Um, inclusion allows all of us to understand that regardless of our background, our race, our age, um, we should be inclusive of all of society, all of our communities. So with that said, I'm going to pass it off to John to talk a little bit about the listening tour. But again, I will challenge you to uh, go online and, and complete that survey because we want to hear from you. Your voice is so important. Um, I appreciate my colleagues so very much. I enjoy all of our conversations, but I will tell you that uh, um, your voice, a youth voice, is just as important, um, and we want to hear from you because we need to generate conversations amongst us that take your voice into account. So your voice is so important in making us have conversations on how we can support you, how we can support all young people to make sure that everybody is is cognizant that all children have rights. But before we get to that, John, uh, a little shout out to all our uh, graduates of 2020 oh, this yeah. year. I almost missed the grand <laughs> shout out. That's right. Um, I'll talk a little bit about with the, with one of the highest honors in our culture that you can be given is not only at a grad, but uh, the, the eagle feather has been associated, the star blanket to honor and, and dress them with the pride of our cultural identity to be able to have an eagle feather. Uh, and I think of the grads that are uh, coming through 2020 because not only have they come through uh, all their hard work and determination and focusing on their, their movement forward into post-secondary, into uh, trades, whatever it is that they're, we, we really wish them a lot of success. Mm -hmm. for their future endeavors because when you think about Aboriginal and not just Aboriginal education but education in general and how important it is to the key for a strong foundation for success in your jobs in your identity it really provides that that solid foundation for moving forward mm -hmm. and right now with with all the stuff that's restarting it's very important to understand that you know, education can be restarted at any time to complete. So, so please, so please hear that. <laughs> As a grandma, I like to say that. <laughs> and, and even with that said, I want, I want to just, I mean, it's, it's important that we recognize every young person who graduates from any type of program. Um, even kindergarten. Even kindergarten. Head start. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Early years, daycare. Yeah. Yeah, um, shout out to all the educators from Head Start to daycares to early years mm -hmm. to middle years and senior years. We value all those hard workers that have done all the work this year, especially in this unforeseen mm -hmm. time. Like it, Well, it's and I think a, we need to acknowledge that this is a completely different year for these graduates. So I have, uh, I'm on graduate number two this year, so really, really proud mom year. Um, but what I have seen is this year for our 2020 graduates, it has been a bit more of a challenge. They mm -hmm. have been, um, and I don't want to use the word forced, but essentially they have had to do a lot of this work on their own. Um, you know, I have tried to support my kids, but I will tell you right now, I'm not a good homeschooler. Um, so again, shout out to the teachers that, that uh, spent the first part of the year uh, teaching our kids to become independent and giving them the tools to allow them to complete this work on their own. Um, educators who called in on their kids, who stopped by to, to see our kids, who checked in on them. Um, thank you, because mm -hmm. I don't know that a lot of our 2020 grads or 2020 anyone really, we needed that extra support. So thank yeah. you to, to the educators that, that did that. Um, but thank you so much to all of the kids out there that worked on your own and that pulled this off. 
So happy so, graduation to each and every one of you. So yeah. speaking of one of our youth right there. This is one of our own. So this is our youth ambassador, Isabel, who graduated this year. So we want to just say uh, happy graduation. <laughs> Congratulations, Isabel. Congratulations. Now, oh, who's that? So I have a special shout out, not only to Isabel, but to my own son who is graduating this year. So good job, Ty, and, and thank you for being such a cool kid. Um, also just wanted to um, say happy graduation and congratulations to the three young men on the screen. So as you see, one of them is my son, Ty. Uh, we've got his buddies, Kyle and Travis. All three will be graduating this year. And they started their journey, their education journey together in kindergarten. So for me, it was pretty amazing to to watch these boys grow. Mm -hmm. um, so and we have a number of staff uh, who reached out to us due, due to confidentiality and you know restrictions that way. We can show everybody's photos and names and whatnot, but we, you know we have staff here at Macy, um, Chris, uh, um, and Ben, and a few others that reached out to us and said they have youth that they work with for graduating this year. I have a granddaughter graduated from kindergarten. So we, we really want to be inclusive and like congratulate everybody, even though we don't have their pictures up because, we're, again, we have certain limitations to who we can put onto onto the internet. But we we did get more word from a lot of our uh, advocates who deal and work with youth daily with their education that uh, there are success stories coming up uh, through us as well, showing that these kids are graduating through some very you know difficult times and they come out to our office. Uh, looking for assistance and they're getting they're getting enough help obviously and uh, getting their voice heard um, it's loud enough so that they're able to succeed and graduate as well this year so. that's right and while i'm acknowledging my middle child on screen i should actually give a shout out to my jakers who is also graduating from grade eight hmm. so he'll be entering high school his uh, his graduation has been of course overshadowed by his older <laughs> brothers uh, third child syndrome, but uh, happy graduation takers. And I'm not only proud of my kids um, and and all of our youth ambassadors and mm -hmm. every child in Manitoba that has managed to get through this strange and odd 2020. So I think we've got about two weeks left. Just hang in there. Um, if you have any assignments to do, I am telling you, you can do them. Um, I just supported my son to do 33 English assignments in two weeks. So you can do it. <laughs> Get it done. You know what I'm good, good with? If it's not math, I'm good with it. Oh, no, keep me away from it. I'm not good. Yes. <laughs> so talking about education, uh, I was doing a little research this week, and it was so overwhelming, the historical timeline uh, of uh, post-secondary education and how it has grown across Canada, not just in our province, but across Canada in terms of everybody taking advantage of post-secondary education, training programs, trades, technical stuff. Uh, it was just too numerous to kind of uh, pick one little topic of an area. So I just wanted to say that post-secondary education is on the rise and it's where to be at and if you're done your grade 12 and you have an aspect there's lots of opportunity out there to uh, go your determination and your success is uh, measured in that way so it's it's great to see a lot of people getting there's programs galore like when I I, I hate to date myself but <laughs> It's growing. <laughs> I'll just stop there. <laughs> it's growing. <laughs> you know what, that I just also, I think it's important too to acknowledge those young people um, who have been involved in programs or school who maybe weren't successful in completing what they needed to complete this year. And I just, your work and your, it's, it's still important. So regardless of, of whether or not you were successful in completing whatever program you were taking um, in the year 2020, um, we acknowledge and recognize that regardless of what the outcome was, um, we want to also congratulate you and tell you how important it is, um, you know, that you started regardless of, of the, there is no end date. So you can, uh, yeah, you can get yeah. it back. And, and we also understand that because it was a very difficult time. So while we're congratulating the grads, we also want to congratulate every young person who 
um, got through any part of this year during this pandemic. And that goes back to Article 29. Your education helped you develop your talents and respect your identity, language, and values. So that says a lot. Uh, I also want to put a short plug out for Aboriginal Day on June 21st. Mm -hmm. Regardless whether there's celebrations, you can celebrate with your family at home in your own yeah. space and way to show that you have an identity, a language, and values about uh, Aboriginal Day. And I know um, there are things going on. There is, and yeah. MF has, yeah. Uh, this, this virtual living yeah. is really, can take you right across the province. The net is so wide. But developing talent, like mm -hmm. there's lots of shout outs. I see lots of beautiful skirts and shirts being made, blankets, earrings, you know, like our, our culture is so beautiful in terms of things that are being developed. So, yes, and that's all part of your education. Shout out to uh, Daphne Robertson, who has a child graduating, mm -hmm. and our own supervisor, Michelle, who has a child graduating. So just uh, making sure we include them as well, because yeah. we're happy to be working here, and we want to keep working here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the listening tour, we were talking about the online survey that Daphne was mentioning, how the education goes both ways. So now we need you to educate us. Uh, we need the youth, we need to hear your voice, we want, we want you to go fill out the survey, it's five to ten minutes, um, you're entered to win an uh, uh, iPad mini, it's a, it's a big grand Brand prize at the end, and basically all you got to do is tell us what kind of struggles are facing youth nowadays in the communities, um, and also maybe what things are going right as well, because we want to be able to share the success stories with all the communities so everybody has that opportunity. opportunity. But outside of the troubles that youth are facing, we want to hear how you would solve it. As a youth, how do you solve these issues? Or how would you like adults and the government in your life to solve these issues? And that's what makes this listening to her so important, the survey so very important. So we need youth. We need youth. Pass that around. Uh, the link will be provided uh, in the video description and uh, on our website, Instagram, we've been plugging that as well. So please pass to your friends, educators, anyone, uh, get your youth to fill this out. If you're a service provider and you want um, any more information, feel free to call our office. Um, in closing, we always give our number. Our number is 1-800-263-7146. Our offices are located at 346 Portage Avenue here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and at the City Centre in Thompson, Manitoba. Um, but again, we do these live feeds every single Friday. John and I have done a webinar that I believe is still in production or we're looking at launching it. Um, the survey, so service providers, if you're running youth groups or, or you need to, or you would like for us to just come out and meet with you or to, you know, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the United Nations Convention on Rights of Children, we are all um, willing and welcome to, to do what we can to make sure that we are educating um, young people and supporting them to educate other young people. So feel free to call us with any questions or concerns. Yes, anything at all. I think it's going to be really useful. Um, if you're not sure if you should call, then you should probably call. Um, that's the best way yeah. we can really go about answer. it. Just call us. Uh, we're going to assist you. You're not going to be turned away. Uh, no one's going to hang up the phone. If you come in, no, you're not going to be turned away and say we can't help you. Our advocates are very good that way. They're going to help you navigate uh, whatever issues you're having and just try and get you on the right path. Um, so you can help solve that or you can solve that yourself even using your own voice. I think that's the key is our advocates aren't there to replace the work. They're there to assist you and get your voice heard. So just please call. Yeah. So one of the other things that I'd like to remind people going into phase three in the next couple of days uh, to still practice safe distancing, uh, social distancing, hand washing, the masks and uh, trying to just stay safe that curve flat. We do have a, a few cases, but not as many as other people. So, and we're very diligent. So, I really say thank you to each and every one, especially the frontline workers, the essential workers. Yes, Everybody you. that is participating is playing their part, you know, and we're very responsible. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Now, with that, I think I'm done for the day. I just, again, wanted to, uh, because I almost forgot the grad shout out, just tell you thank you so much um, for joining us, watching, watching us. Uh, congratulations to all the grads out there, all the uh, children and youth who are still working on, on getting to the end of their 
Um, again, Article 29, your education should help you develop your talents, respect your identity, language, and values. That goes both ways, so teach us. So in closing, I'd like just like to remind people that um, children are a gift from the Creator, and they are very sacred. So uh, the other lesson that we need to also bring home, not just for Aboriginal people, but for everybody that education is a lifelong le learning lesson. It's a process and it's part of your journey. So every day I tell people we're learning, you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, the good with the bad. So it's all about that balance in that journey. That's a good part. So with that, if we've got nothing else, we would like to say to you happy Friday and please join us next week um, for another Facebook live episode. Check out our website, uh, Go on our Instagram and uh, have a great week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back next Friday. Good evening, Rich.